COVID-19 in the correctional setting. Hi, I'm Dr. Leah Rurvig, a family doctor and specialist in older adults. I'm part of the AMEN team at the University of California at San Francisco. We work to promote the health and well-being of people who live and work in U.S. jails and prisons. Welcome to this brief presentation about COVID-19, which was designed specifically for residents of correctional facilities. I hope you find this information very useful. Before we begin, we will be talking today about COVID-19, a new coronavirus that is infecting people around the world. Doctors and scientists are learning more about the virus every day. This presentation is based on information from April 13th, 2020. Some information may change once more is known about the virus. Today, we're gonna to talk first about COVID-19, what it is and how it spreads, what the symptoms are, and who is at highest risk of getting seriously ill. Then we'll talk about COVID-19 prevention. We'll talk about preventing COVID-19 both outside of prison as well as inside of prison. We'll talk about social distancing and what that means. We'll talk about protecting yourself from infection and helping prevent the spread of COVID-19 to other people. What is COVID-19? Coronavirus disease, also called COVID-19, as you can see, they took the CO, the VI, and the D to make the word COVID, is an infectious disease caused by a newly discovered coronavirus. The number 19 is used in the name because the disease was discovered in December of 2019. How does COVID-19 spread? COVID-19 spreads from person to person. Most commonly, it is spread when droplets from a sick person, like droplets of saliva, mucus, or phlegm, come into contact with another person's mouth, nostrils, or eyes. This could happen when you're near a sick person, for example, within six feet of them, who coughs or sneezes into the air. It can also happen indirectly. If you touch something like a door handle that has a droplet on it, and then you, with that hand, touch your mouth, nostrils, or eyes, the virus can get into your body and make you sick. How long does it take to get symptoms after getting infected with COVID-19? On average, it takes about five days for a person to experience symptoms after they're infected. So in other words, after you're exposed to the virus, you might not have symptoms for about five days. Almost everyone will have symptoms by 12 days. So in other words, if two weeks have passed since you were exposed to the virus and you have no symptoms, you likely do not have COVID-19. What are the most common symptoms of COVID-19? Fever is the most common symptom. More than 80% of infected people will have a fever. Cough is experienced by 45 to 80% of people who are sick with COVID-19. Shortness of breath is also very common as are muscle aches. Sore throat and runny nose, nausea and vomiting and diarrhea are not common in COVID-19. Less than 25% of people with the virus will have those symptoms. Now you may notice that these estimates are not very exact. So for example, when I say only 20 to 50% of people have shortness of breath, that's a big range, right? And that's because we're still learning about the virus. As more cases are identified, those estimates will become more accurate. How sick do most people get from COVID-19? Well, most adults, 80% who get COVID-19 have a mild illness that can be managed at home. However, 10 to 15% of people get so sick that they do have to be admitted to a hospital. 5 to 10% of people with COVID-19 have to be admitted to an intensive care unit where they might require a ventilator. That's a machine that breathes for you, which some people call life support. Who is at risk of getting seriously ill from COVID-19? Older adults are at highest risk of getting seriously ill. That means anyone over age 60, and in particular, people who are 80 years old or older are at the highest risk of getting very sick. People with certain chronic medical conditions are also at risk from getting seriously ill. Those include things like heart disease, so anyone who's had a heart attack in the past, COPD, that means if you have emphysema or chronic bronchitis, which are types of lung diseases, you're also at higher risk, People with diabetes, high blood pressure, obesity, and chronic kidney disease are also at higher risk of getting seriously ill from COVID-19. It's important to know, though, that severe COVID-19 can happen in adults of all ages, including those without any of the risk factors that are listed on this page. How is COVID-19 treated? With supportive care. In other words, what we do is we give you things to help you manage the symptoms. Unfortunately, we do not yet have any medications that will attack the COVID-19 virus directly. That means that if you happen to need to be in the hospital, you'll be given oxygen, Tylenol, inhalers, or IV fluids. 
Preventing COVID-19 Infection. What are people doing outside of prison to lower their chance of getting COVID-19? Well, the most important thing is practicing social distancing and frequently washing your hands. Social distancing means staying at least six feet away from anyone who doesn't live with you. In terms of washing your hands, the best way to wash your hands is with soap and water and you need to scrub your hands for at least 20 seconds as this actually will kill the virus that causes COVID-19. You can also use a hand sanitizer that's at least 60% alcohol. It's important to not touch your face because as you may recall, touching your mouth, nose, or eyes can introduce the virus to your body. And people are also wearing masks in some cases to reduce their risk of getting COVID-19. As you can see, these things are things you can do not only outside of prison, but in many cases also inside of a prison. Let's talk more about social distancing because it can be quite confusing. Social distancing is also called physical distancing, and it means staying six feet or two arms lengths away from other people who don't live with you at all times. In other words, you do not need to practice social distancing from your cellmate as you are not able to, in general, stay six feet apart from that person at all times. This means that when you're walking down the hall, waiting in line for pills or labs, talking to friends, or even outside recreating, you need to always maintain six feet away from other people. In more and more states, social distancing is legally required, including right now in the state of California, where I live. Practicing social distancing and frequent hand washing makes it very difficult for the virus to spread. I'm going to show you some photos of social distancing and what it looks like outside of prison so you can get a sense of what that means. On the top here, you can see a photo of several gentlemen standing in a circle, six feet apart from each other, and speaking to each other that way. In the photo down below, you can see people sitting in a conference room with their chairs all six feet apart so that there's plenty of distance between them so they do not spread a viral infection among each other. Here you see a photo of people standing in line. I think that they're waiting to get into a store. And you can see there's a large distance, at least six feet, between each group of people waiting in line. A few other things you can do to practice social distancing in prison are don't shake hands, don't fist bump, and in general, don't be close enough to touch if you don't have to. Try to limit the number of people you're close to, and if allowed, sleep head to foot with your cellmate so that your head is farther away from your cellmate's head. Don't touch things that are used by a lot of people, like weights, handballs, dominoes, or playing cards, and try to keep areas and objects that are used by many people clean, like the day room, the dining table, the shower knobs, or the sink handles. Now, I realize that this may require significant changes to your daily life. For example, if you play cards every day, now I'm telling you that this could be dangerous. However, we do know that social distancing is a critical part of preventing the spread of COVID-19. Now, many ask me, why are some people wearing face coverings or face masks? Face coverings are an important way to decrease the spread of COVID-19. A face covering should completely cover your mouth and nose. It could be a surgical mask, like what we use in the hospital or the clinic, or a cloth face covering, like a bandana or a cut of folded t-shirt folded in half. These face coverings make it harder for droplets from coughs or sneezes to pass to someone else or to you. And they also remind you not to touch your face. Most people outside of prison are wearing a homemade cloth face covering, not a surgical mask. And that's because we have a national shortage of surgical face masks in the United States. And we try to save those surgical face masks for nurses and doctors who have to work in a clinic or a hospital. This is how you put on and wear a mask. First, before you put on the mask, clean your hands either with soap and water or an alcohol-based hand rub. Remember to scrub for at least 20 seconds either way. Then cover your mouth and nose with the mask and make sure that there's as little gap as possible between your face and the mask. You want the mask to adhere closely around your nose and mouth. You wanna to avoid touching the mask while you're using it. And if you do have to touch the mask, clean your hands with alcohol-based hand rub or soap and water. If you are wearing a cloth face mask, at the end of the day, take the mask off without touching the front, so you only ever want to touch the part that goes around your head or around your ears, and immediately wash it in soapy water. Wash your hands, and then wait until your face covering is completely dry before you wear it again. If it's clean and dry and you're not wearing it, store it in a dry, protected place. If the facility where you live is running additional laundry services to keep the face coverings clean, you should use that. What else lowers your chance of getting COVID-19 in prison? Well, anyone who has a fever and a new cough should be seen by medical staff. 
so you should definitely encourage anyone with symptoms to report them immediately. The longer an infection goes without anyone knowing about it, the more risk there is of others getting infected. You also want to encourage frequent hand washing and increased cleaning and sanitizing of the housing unit where you live. What should you do if you think you have COVID-19? First, put on a face covering if you have one. This will help protect others. Second, immediately tell staff and medical personnel. When you're meeting with medical personnel, make sure they know about any risk factors you have for serious illness from COVID-19, like heart disease, diabetes, asthma, emphysema, or elevated blood pressure. And don't panic, because remember, most people do not become seriously ill from COVID-19. The most important thing is to tell medical personnel and then follow their instructions. Is it normal to move someone into temporary isolation if they have COVID-19 symptoms? The short answer is yes. A resident may be placed in medical isolation while they're waiting for the results of COVID-19 testing. Remember, this is actually very important to protect both other residents as well as staff. But medical isolation is not punishment, and people in medical isolation should continue to get as many regular privileges as medical staff believe can be safely continued. Once a person has their test results, they should either return to their regular housing unit or be put in a treatment unit with other residents with COVID-19. People should not remain in medical isolation indefinitely without a specific plan to return to the general population. Prison staff and residents are all at risk of infection unless everyone acts to prevent COVID-19 from spreading and report symptoms when they appear. It's important we all work together and that we all follow guidance from medical staff. I hope this information will be helpful to you, but I understand that being incarcerated during this time is uniquely challenging. To answer some specific questions you might have about how to stay safe and stay healthy while you're incarcerated, I'm now going to be joined by Lawrence Bartley. I'll let Lawrence introduce himself and then we'll answer some common questions that you might have. Hi, my name is Lawrence Bartley and unfortunately, I was incarcerated at the age of 17 and I served 27 years and two months. Now, I'm the director of News Inside, which is a print publication produced by the Marshall Project, a nonpartisan, nonprofit news organization that covers the criminal justice system. Now I know many of you are afraid because your worlds have been turned upside down by the coronavirus. I know many of you can't social distance. You may not have access to the proper cleaning supplies and that further has you on edge. This is why I use my personal experience with incarceration to then partner with UCSF and the AMEN team in order to bring you this PSA that we hope will keep you safe. Questions and answers. Staying safe in prison during the COVID-19 epidemic. Should I be scared about getting released? Most places outside of prison have a lower risk of infection than any type of group living situation. That's because it's usually easier to stay six feet away from people you don't live with when you're out in the community. Also, it might be easier to get cleaning products and stay away from people who are sick when you're not in prison. You and I both know that these are scary times. And if you are anything like me when I was incarcerated, you improvise to survive. In the free world, you have more space and access to safety and cleaning supplies. Many of the items I purchase from the commissary or canteen are packaged in cardboard or plastic. How can I protect myself? The virus can stay alive on plastic or metal for up to 72 hours and on cardboard for up to 24 hours. Try to disinfect or wash with soap any packages. And remember to wash your hands whenever you touch things that came from a common area. You can also simply bring an item into your room and leave it there for a few days, during which time the virus will die. Throw away any cardboard boxes and plastic packaging before you enter your cell or bunk area. You can store any exposed food in small plastic bags. Be sure to wash and air dry the net bag you use to carry items you purchase from the commissary as soon as you unpack them. What's the safest way to use the community phone? Phone receivers, buttons, and cords should be disinfected at least daily. Still, wash your hands before and after you make a call. If you choose to wrap the receiver with a clean sock or a piece of cloth, don't touch your face with the side that covered the receiver. 
If you take your makeshift cover back to your cell, wash it with soap and water thoroughly, and don't use it again until it's completely dry, as germs thrive on moisture. Wash your hands before and after you make your call. If you have access to disinfect it, clean the receiver, buttons, and cord before and after you use the phone. If you cover the receiver with a clean sock or cloth, follow the medical advice that was just given to you by Leah. What should I do if someone who prepares food has COVID-19 symptoms? Currently, there is no evidence of transmission of coronavirus through food. However, anyone with symptoms should be immediately evaluated by medical staff. Respectfully ask the food handler to consult with the medical department. Remember that we are all in this together. There is no need to be rude to symptomatic people who may be afraid and vulnerable. Now, before I go, I want to leave you with this. There may be some of you who are experiencing symptoms and would much rather ride it out in your cells rather than report it to the medical staff for fear of being placed in solitary confinement. But just think about it. You may have neighbors to the right or to the left of you that have asthma or any of the other pre-existing conditions that makes he or she susceptible to the coronavirus. So not only will you be putting your own lives at risk, you'll be putting the lives of others at risk. And in order for us to make it to the other side of this virus alive, we're gonna have to take care of one another. So please take heed to everything I said in this video and take heed to what Leah said. Because once again, we're all in this together, no matter what. So with that, I'm signing off. So stay healthy and stay safe by doing whatever's necessary to protect yourselves. Take care. We understand this is a lot of information. If you have additional questions or concerns, contact your healthcare provider. If there's a topic or question you'd like us to address in a future video, you can contact AMEND or the News Inside team. Our address and a phone number where you can reach us are included on the next screen. Thank you. AMEND at UCSF is a health-focused prison reform program led by experts in medicine, public health, and correctional health and policy. We're based at the University of California, where we work to promote the health and well-being of people who live and work in U.S. jails and prisons.